Welcome to another edition of It's Still Real to Me. I, of course, am your host, Jonathan Zaslow. So glad to have you aboard here. Obviously, everything Zaslow Show 2.0, including It's Still Real to Me, always brought to us by our title sponsor, Anna Jar and Levine, Accident Attorneys, 800-747-FREE, 800-747-3733. If you're involved in any kind of an accident, hit and run, motorcycle accident, slip and fall. If you're dealing with a personal injury that wasn't your fault, you deserve to be compensated. And I send you where you're going to be treated like family and get you the money that you deserve. Anna Jar and Levine, Accident Attorneys, 800-747-FREE, 800-747-3733. And hey, we're here to talk about pro wrestling. We got a lot to catch up on, but first, you guys know there's so much going on and bet online. That's your number one source for all your summer sports this season. MLB, golf, NBA, NHL, all the latest stats and news and scores from all your favorite teams are available. Get the latest odds and lines, including the latest team matchups, player props, odds, just about every sport out there. Head to the website today or use your mobile device. Get in on the action. Bet online where the game starts. Now, if you're watching on video, we're not doing live stream right now. So you may be watching on YouTube. If you're listening on the podcast, I love you long time. If you want to watch the video, youtube.com slash at Zaslow show. We are not doing it live right now because you may notice it is just me. We are doing this solo. Our pal Joey, he is not with us today. And we have, we didn't do a show earlier in the week. Our schedules are having a hard time lining up these days. I'm working a lot, obviously, ESPN. He's working a lot with his regular job. We're having a hard time lining up. So Joey's going to step aside for a little bit. I'm going to make sure I continue pumping out new shoes. Hopefully, we'll be able to get him back on the show at some point soon. That's my guy. You don't have to look into anything. Nothing nefarious going on, all right? But Joey is not on the show today. Not going to be on the show for the near future. Like I said, he's working a lot. He's got to make that money, all right? So. I'm going to do the show solo for now, but that's all good, all right? So, a lot to get to here. We got WrestleMania reaction. We got Raw after Mania reaction. We got AEW from last night where they released the footage. I mean, what the hell is AEW doing? I don't know. So, anyway, there's a lot going on here, a lot happening. Now, let's start out with WrestleMania. I know we're a few days past, but I want to give a few thoughts on some of the bigger stories. The first thing I want to say is, what an unbelievable show. And I've talked a little bit about this on Zaslow Show 2.0, but what an unbelievable show. It's why, and I've told you this so many times, I don't like traveling for pro sports. You know, if I'm going to go to Game 7, Miami Heat, what if they get their shit kicked in? I spent all of that money. I leave unhappy. That's not a good time to me. WWE always make sure you leave happy. They're able to put on the best show possible because it's scripted. They're able to put on the best show possible. And even after night one, you know, like I was asked, uh, my guys at ESPN, you're like, hey, is that because I hosted the WrestleMania show on Saturday? And they said to me, what did you think of of WrestleMania night one? I was like, it was fine. You know, I hope tonight, meaning night two, I hope it's better. I think it will be better. And the point is, They never let you down because that night two of WrestleMania, and by the way, I love two nights of WrestleMania. I love that they take over the whole weekend. That night two of WrestleMania was as enjoyable a night maybe I've ever had at home on the Zaslow Mansion family room couch watching pro wrestling. It was the the way the show started, first of all. Night two was a lot better than night one. And just, it started with such a massive bang. The match between Drew and Seth, I thought was fantastic. It went the way we thought it would. Drew gets his moment. We knew that Punk was going to interfere somehow, but Punk doesn't like Rollins. Punk doesn't like McIntyre. They're clearly all in on the Punk-McIntyre feud. And going to the next night as well, Raw after Mania, where Punk would then cost McIntyre a shot in the Fatal 4-Way to be number one contender for Drew McIntyre's, uh, Drew McIntyre, for Damian Priest World Championship. They are all in on McIntyre Punk, which is funny because when Punk first got to WWE, 
what are we thinking about, right? Oh, let's get Punk versus Reigns. Let's get Punk versus Rollins, which was probably the direction, the initial direction they were going to go in. Uh, Punk versus Rhodes. I don't think anyone was saying Punk versus McIntyre. And now, how much juice does Punk versus McIntyre have? And they got time to build it. It's almost like an old school build where there's not going to be so much physicality because Punk is still not cleared to wrestle. It's an old school slow burn kind of build. I love this McIntyre Punk build. And so McIntyre gets the big moment. It's almost like it was perfect because McIntyre gets the big moments, which we know. And I was explaining to my son while we're watching and McIntyre's holding up the belt. And, and, and I told my son, like, you understand why this is a big deal, right? I mean, obviously it's predetermined, but the work that these guys put in, the work that Drew McIntyre has put in, and having that moment in front of the crowd, that's, that's earned, all right? So the match can be predetermined, but him having that moment is earned. He's put in a lot of work and, oh, well, well, you know, what do you mean it's, it's earned there? They, they decided to give you the belt. Here's the best way that I would describe it to that person. Oh, let's use radio, for example. If I were to be given, and, and I was at one point, the hosting job for Morning Drive. Morning Drive's the number one piece of real estate in radio. If I'm given the Morning Drive spot, I thank my bosses because of what it means. Now, they gave me that spot, but I earned it. I've earned now the opportunity to be the top guy. They put me, my bosses have put me in a position to repre represent the company, the radio station, and be, they're telling me, you're our number one guy, take the ball and run with it. And that's what it means when you win the world championship in pro wrestling. Your boss, your company, they are telling you, you're our top guy now. It's like a promotion and you're going to represent us. So it's meaningful. But the way WWE did it, oh my God, Drew gets his moment. I mean, in reality, Drew's defended the title. Now, he hasn't defended the title in front of crowds, but he's had he's defended the title. He's had two reigns. One of them was long, one of them was shorter. The moment is not defending the title in front of a crowd. The moment is winning it in front of the crowd. And they gave him that. And then they continue the story and continue the character where Drew keeps getting screwed. And Drew keeps blaming everybody else for all of his prob problems. And he keeps being a huge crybaby. And they accomplished both of those feats on the opening night of Wrestle opening match of WrestleMania night two. And if Drew were to hold, like, whenever Punk is ready, and it seems like he might be close, we're obviously getting Drew versus Punk. A, Drew versus Punk has so much juice to it, it does not need to be for the title. And number two, why would CM Punk get a title shot? What has CM Punk done to earn a title shot? He, he literally hasn't won a match in WWE, right? I mean, I know he wrestled that house show at Madison Square Garden, which he won, but on TV, Royal Rumble, he didn't win. And other than that, he hasn't had a match. And he's just going to come back from injury really come back from 10 years and just get a title match? Why should he get a title? Why is he the number one contender? There's no reason for Drew to have the belt in that feud. And that feud doesn't need the belt. So they accomplished multiple things with that match. I love, uh, and by the way, the callback, you know, Drew hugs and kisses his wife and then Punk who just snaps because Drew is taunting him and Punk, he then looks over at the wife Blows a kiss to her. What a great callback to obviously when he blew the kiss at Vince McMahon. Was it, was it money in the bank when he beat Cena, won the championship, and left with the belt, right? Great callback. Loved Punk's performance there. Excellent job by everybody involved. And, of course, Priest being the second ever to cash in money in the bank. Phenomenal moment. I mean, you... Look, you guys were watching. You know what it's like. You're sitting there, and once Punk gets involved, like, oh, shit, oh, shit, money in the bank. And you're waiting for it, 
and then Damian Priest music hits. Me and my son, we jumped off the Zaslow Mansion family room couch. What are the bank? What are the bank? Damian Priest. And it was very, very exciting. Very, very well done. I loved it. I love. And again, Punk, the facial expressions, the cam work. Boy, Punk was phenomenal. I can't wait for that feud to get in the ring to get physical with Punk and McIntyre. That shit's going to be awesome. Now, we go to the main event. I, I don't need to get into the main event because we're, we're four days removed. Everybody knows how great it was. I think it was the greatest main event finale of all time in the history of WrestleMania. Because there's there, there's a few different angles to take. Number one, the match was phenomenal. Cody finishing his story the way that they weaved everything. Do you know how impressive it is for all the, you know, Solo running down, Jimmy running down, Cena, Rollins, Undertaker, and for all of that to be done in front of a live crowd seamlessly. It's it's a phenomenal production. Unbelievable job. And the whole thing... Not only was it just so incredibly exciting. I mean, we were cheering in the house. This guy comes out. This guy comes out. Then you hear the Undertaker's gong because we were all waiting for Stone Cold, right? But if you're not going to get Stone Cold, there was going to be a level of disappointment. Oh, the Undertaker. Okay, that'll do. And we're just, we're freaking out, you know? And so the Undertaker manages to clear the ring. And then you get Seth Rollins. And I'm a little bit embarrassed. Because I didn't get it at first. The storytelling was so good. I didn't even get it at first. And Seth Rollins comes out to the old shield. And he is, in fact, Cody Rhodes' shield. I think I was so busy wondering when Seth Rollins is going to turn on Cody Rhodes. Because, look, Cody's 3-0 against Seth Rollins, one-on-one. Remember when he came back WrestleMania? And then was it... Hell in a Cell, and was it also SummerSlam, whatever it was. <laughs> Cody, 3-0 and against Rollins. He's kind of waiting for Rollins to turn on him. But you know what? That's low-hanging fruit. And WWE, the way that they've been telling stories now, they're not about low-hanging fruit anymore. They're about telling great stories. And Seth comes to the ring, and he's Cody Rhodes' shield. The way that he said he would be. For these last couple months in the build. He wasn't faking. It wasn't full of shit. He was serious. Seth Rollins is almost the unsung hero of this story. Because he's wanted that title off Roman. So that there could be a champion. Who's going to defend that WWE title. Which by the way. I don't think they're going to call it Universal anymore. I think it's just going to be WWE title. Someone who could defend that WWE title. And be on television every single week. You know the way that he has with the world title. And that right there, the business, even though business is, is a booming, the business and having a, a present champion is more important to Seth than his current well-being. And he was more focused on that and Cody maybe than he was on retaining his own championship. So Seth comes down and he's the shield. But he fails initially. Gets Superman punched right away by Roman Reigns. But then as he gets up, you got that moment where, and it happened earlier, Drew McIntyre. Drew McIntyre was more focused on his hatred for CM Punk than he was in what he just did and win the world championship. And it cost him. It cost him his title. And then at the end of the night, Roman Reigns was more fixated with getting revenge on Seth Rollins and smacking him in the back with that chair while wearing that shield uniform and recreating that moment from, what was it, eight years ago, seven, eight years ago, and getting his payback on Rollins. That became more important to him than the current battle with Cody Rhodes. And it cost him. It cost him his championship. It cost him everything. Like Cody Rhodes said, he was going to take everything from him. 
And so Seth Rollins was the shield. And that's an insane callback. And that's insane storytelling. And that's where we're at right now with WWE. We we are officially in a new era for WWE. I know that it's the Paul Levesque era, but that to me, besides great entertainment, that to me was the main story this weekend. This was a changing of the guard. We are in a new era. From, from Paul Heyman's Hall of Fame speech and the way he spoke of Triple H to Stephanie McMahon. She's back. How great was it seeing her? By the way, I think she's 50 years old now. What a fucking knockout. I mean, she is gorgeous. She's back. That was awesome to see. All of the, the big stars. This, this was, These weren't mid-card guys who came to the ring congratulating Cody. This was Randy Orton and Jey Uso and L.A. Knight and Seth Rollins and Kevin Owens. These were main event guys who were in the ring celebrating Cody, who's now the face of this new direction of WWE. That was the biggest story of WrestleMania 40 was we have an official changing of the guard. And the way that Stephanie, to kick off night two, told us how this is the Paul Levesque era. So did Triple H have control of WrestleMania 39? I guess, but they're really going out of their way to tell you, no, no, no. Now we're really free of Vince McMahon's influence. And I think it's very clear. And by the way, the executive director of WWE Raw as well, Kevin Dunn, who's no longer there, you've noticed how great the production is now of these WWE shows, right? Vince McMahon, as much as I've loved Vince McMahon, I mean, he he gave my childhood so much enjoyment. But we got to a place now, it's very clear. Vince McMahon and Kevin Dunn were holding WWE back. And now, Triple H, with the fan in mind. I mean, the fan didn't like the direction they were going in with Rock versus Roman. And they pivoted, apparently. And they're listening to the fans. And they're sending everyone home happy. And Vince wasn't doing that anymore. We're in a brand new era. And that's my favorite part of pro wrestling is they're always going to send me home happy. They're always going to send me home entertained. That was the biggest story. This is a new era in pro wrestling. Notice that pro wrestling, a word that seemingly they're not afraid or words, a phrase, a name that they're seemingly not afraid to say anymore. And they haven't been allowed to say that in many, many years. Always sports entertainment. We may be getting back to pro wrestling. Is this going to be called the pro wrestling era? I know the Renaissance era has been spoken about. Paul Levesque era? I don't know. Whatever it is, that was the biggest story. But speaking of story, that story with Seth Rollins and proving himself to Cody and the handshake between Cody and Seth, who was in tears and bruised and battered and beaten outside the ring. Seth was the big hero. He helped Cody. He proved himself as a guy you can trust for now, but he proved himself as a guy you can trust. So during this whole buildup, we may have said, wow, Seth Rollins coming off like a, like a real buster. Seth Rollins was a big fat star, a big star at the end of WrestleMania 40. And he was Cody Shield. And I'm a little bit embarrassed that I didn't see it right away. I didn't get it. That story was so deep that it went over my head. And then when I realized, I'm like, yeah, that shit was awesome. That's good stuff, man. And by the way, Samantha Irvin, right when she started to make the announce, I said to myself, oh, Samantha Irvin's emotional. And then the video comes out and she's crying. She's one of us. She's one of us. It's like if, if a fan is the ring announcer. And that is what we have. And for me, I already loved Samantha Irvin. But now, you got Howard Finkel, always going to be the OG number one. 
Samantha Irvin is right underneath him. And then everybody else is so far, so far beneath Samantha Irvin. She's number two by a long shot. Incredible, incredible WrestleMania. So two biggest takeaways. Greatest finale to a WrestleMania of all time. And we are officially in a new era. And it may be the best era for WWE. Uh, when do we get Punk and McIntyre, we're thinking? I mean, May, June, July, August. SummerSlam's in four months. I feel like that's too long. I don't know. Maybe Money in the Bank in a couple of months. Uh, yeah, so we're looking forward to Punk and McIntyre. And of course, based on what happened on Monday night, we're looking forward to Rock and Cody, which maybe SummerSlam, but I think more likely WrestleMania 41. I think we're getting it on the massive stage. Cody versus Rock, WrestleMania 41. Uh, you just And look, we know Cody's the top guy at this point, but the finish of that match, the emotion, the emotion everywhere, the stories, it's just, it, I'm huge on nostalgia. I'm huge on anything that makes me feel like a kid again. And that's why I love WWE. It makes me feel like a kid again. And I think we all felt that emotion at the end of WrestleMania 41. Even though I was I was pretty much rooting for Roman. Because here's the thing. I mean, Roman's run has been amazing. I love Roman Reigns. And how, like, all the people who said that WWE missed the opportunity, right? When Roman beat Cody at WrestleMania 39. I mean, how stupid do you look now? Missed the opportunity. We wouldn't have gotten everything that we've gotten over the last year, and we wouldn't have gotten what we got at the end of WrestleMania 40 Night 2. Like, miss the opportunity. They obviously did the right thing. We got another year of Bloodline, and we got the finale that we all deserved, the finale that we got on Sunday Night Night 2 WrestleMania 40. I mean, miss their opportunity. Our emotions and feelings only grew. We're only exacerbated by the extra year. That's a, that's why I was rooting for Roman Reigns. I wanted another year of this. I'm into it. But it reminds you why pro wrestling is the best. How can you not be romantic about pro wrestling? It's the best, man. It's the best. Now, I don't know if you noticed, sitting on the railing, for both nights at the entrance railing for both nights WrestleMania 1 and 2 and best seat in the house for Raw after Mania. I've sat in the best seat in the house for. Best seat in the house is front row on the corner on the runway. That's the best seat in the house. I've sat there before with both of my boys for Monday Night Raw. It is the best seat in the house. And best seat in the house, Monday night, Raw after Mania, our great sponsor, Matthew H. Mashler. Your trusted real estate broker, signature real estate fight. He was right there. Big dude, looking great in the suit. He's got the hair in a bun. He's got the big beard. That's Matthew H. Mashlord, right there. Best seat in the house. He was on camera the whole night. He is your trusted real estate broker, right? So if you're looking for your dream home in any part of South Florida, look no further than Matthew H. Mashler. If you want to sell your home, you want to make sure it's an easy process. And wherever you're selling in the entire state of Florida, look, Signature Realties, they're all over the state. But give Matthew a call today, 561-208-3334, or go to realestatefinder.com. If you just want to sell one of your current properties, call Matthew today. Get it sold at the best price out there, 561-208-3334. If you're in the business and you want to take your real estate career to the next level, you could join the Signature team. The Signature real estate companies, they're South Florida's industry leaders, ranked number one in Boca. Call Matthew H. Mashler, 561-208-3334, realestatefinder.com. Matthew H. Mashler, your pathway to exceptional real estate experiences. So let me give you a little bit of raw after mania. Remember Raw after Mania last year? WrestleMania 39 was really good. Shocking finish with Roman beating Cody. And remember Raw after Mania last year was when you were going to have Cody and Brock against Roman and Solo, I think, in the main event. And then Brock turned on Cody for 
seemingly no reason, and it led to that feud. Good feud. Sorry, I take a sip of my vitamin water. I'm very thirsty. But that Raw After Mania, which is always a great show, if you remember last year, was fucking awful. It was a horrible show. I remember watching, like, I can't believe how bad this show is. What is going on? And then, now you never know exactly what to believe when it comes to behind-the-scenes stuff, but apparently Vince was back in charge. And Vince was right in the show. Which would make sense because that show was horrible. It was one of the worst Raws in, in at least a year. It was a terrible show. I really enjoyed Raw After Mania. By the way, how good is the minimalistic set? Apparently, they're going to be doing this more often as supply and demand, as, as ticket sales dictate. If they feel that they could sell those seats behind the stage, they're going to get rid of the stage and they're going to do the minimalistic setup for Raw and SmackDown every week. I love the minimalistic setup. I just, it looks less like a show and more like an event, more like a real fighting event. That's the way it was when I was growing up. Y you watch WWE superstars in the morning and you had the whole building filled. You didn't have this huge stage. And for the pay-per-views too, it was just a little entranceway. I love the minimalistic setup. So apparently they're going to be doing that more often. Raw After Mania though was great. <laughs> you got a couple of great surprises. Both NXT champions fought. Ilya Dragunov. By the way, I can't wait for Dragunov versus Gunther. Because Dragunov is the one who finally beat Walter for the NXT UK title as he held that belt for a couple of years. Ilya Dragunov, fantastic. He beat Shinsuke Nakamura. And also, Roxanne Perez, the NXT Women's Champion, she beat Indy Hartwell. And I, I guess Roxanne Perez, I don't watch NXT every week. I guess Roxanne Perez, she's a heel now? I didn't realize that. But they were on, and how great was Cena? I mean, our truth saying, our partner is someone you can't see. Oh, my God. And Cena shows up. He helps our truth our truths hero, John Cena. That shit was fun, all right? So, Raw of Dominion was a fun show. Drew gets screwed by CM Punk at the beginning of the show. Cody, what a great montage. They put together that video. Cody's crying. Cody loves to cry. Cody's crying there. And again, like I told you, how could you not be romantic about professional wrestling? That's what you got this weekend. It's a love story. It really is for all of us. Pro wrestling is a love story. And this weekend was phenomenal. I had such a great time. I do want to mention real quick, AEW yesterday. So I haven't watched AEW from last night yet. And I'll get around to it. But I know the big story was they're going to air the footage from Brawl Out. Where CM Punk backstage attacks Jack Perry. And I know they're making it into an angle where Young Bucks are showing it. Because they think that that's why they lost to FTR that night. And they think FTR made CM Punk do that to distract him. It's a whole, you, you know, cockamamie storyline. But we also know it's really because Punk went on the MMA hour with Ariel Hawani and told his side of the story. Well, they, they showed the video. And for the most part, Punk's side of the story checks out. I mean, Punk looks to be the aggressor, but... You don't know what Jack Perry said to him as they're face to face. Like Jack Perry may have said, I'm going to fuck you up. And like Punk said, I can't, you know, Chael Sonnen's famous words, so Juan de la Silva, I can't let you get close to me. Well, once Jack Perry says, I'm going to fuck you up, and I'm just assuming, then Punk's like, I can't let you get close to me. And he had to make the first move. So we don't know what was said, but I got to tell you, I don't know what AEW is doing showing that footage. And apparently now it's been taken off all social media. I don't know if there's a, a law issue or what, which kind of makes it crazy that they show that. Can you imagine WWE showing backstage footage of a legitimate fight, of an embarrassing moment in their company? A moment that led to their biggest star, you could say CM Punk, being fired or quit, however you want to look at it. A moment where... Tony Khan said he feared for his life, which by the way, watch that video. Like, are, are you kidding me? You feel for, you feared for your life. Come on, take it down a notch. But I don't understand what AEW is doing showing that they're showing a huge star in WWE 
looking like a badass and beating up, putting a chokehold on one of your stars. And, and then after that, Will Ospreay, who's phenomenal, might be the best wrestler in the world. He's shooting on Triple H during the show last night, apparently, in an interview talking about you only got to the top because you slept to the boss's daughter. I don't think anyone cares about that kind of stuff. And by the way, that was 25 years ago. Triple H hasn't proven that, A, he's one of the greatest champions of all time, and B, he's booking an incredible promotion right now. Who cares that he slept with the boss's daughter 25 years ago? It's not like she was underage or something. All right. Slept with and fell in love and married the boss's daughter and now is, and became one of the greatest world champions of all time and is put, and just put on one of the greatest WrestleManias ever. What an insult. I, I don't understand what AEW is doing. It feels like showing that footage was a little bit of hot shotting. If you don't know what hot shot means, that means like, In the short term, you're trying to pop a rating. And it's something that's not going to work out for you long term. Being more interested in the short term than the long term. WCW used to hot shot. We know how that went for them. It feels a little bit like hot shotting by showing that footage. And coming right after WrestleMania as well, it feels really desperate. It's like, holy shit, what are we supposed to do? We're in big trouble here. Uh, I, I, I think AEW looks terrible right now. But anyway. That's, I don't want to focus on that. I wanted to focus on what an amazing weekend WrestleMania was. Make sure you like, you rate, you comment, you do all that fun stuff. Uh, Comment underneath the show here some of your thoughts from WrestleMania. If you loved it, how, I mean, how, do you love the new direction that we're going in? Is this indeed a new era in professional wrestling? Am I the only one who didn't get the nuances of Seth Rollins being Cody Rhodes' shield? Am I the only dummy? Make sure you comment here. We could do some interaction and that whole deal. But like, rate, comment. If you're listening on the podcast, same thing. I love that. If you're listening on the podcast, make sure you also check out the YouTube channel where this whole episode, youtube.com slash at Zaslow Show. Tell all your friends, tell your family members, tell your mother I say hello. And yeah, we'll pop up a new episode of It's Still Roomy this weekend. We'll do another one this weekend. Whatever, right? I got the time. All right. Thanks, you guys, for checking in. I'm sorry it took a couple extra days to do a little reaction from WrestleMania and from Raw after Mania. I love you guys so much. Today's show, obviously, also brought to you in part by Bet Online. I love pro wrestling. We'll talk to you on the next edition of It's Still Real to Me. See ya.